finer artist. Box keeps staring at me. Let's go back into bed when we have All right. Seeing the dead return to life. I must know who she is. That can do no good. The dead have no place among the living. I shall be the judge of that. Lawrence, for a man your age, you're certainly in the pink. I have to be. Most people don't know, but giving a piano recital requires the stamina of a marathon runner. Say, hey, Judd, I think you better give my right forearm muscles another going over. I feel a slight cramp in my index finger. Yes, sir. Hello, Dad. Hello, darling. Hi, Bob. How am I doing? Marvelously. I don't believe I've ever heard you in better form. <laughs> That's because you're home from school, my dear. I was playing for you tonight. Oh, am I glad this engagement ends my concert tour. <laughs> now I can relax, wear old clothes, and let my beard grow. Oh, and devote some time to your only daughter. You know, I feel as if I'd been piano. Uh-uh, uh-uh, don't bite the piano that feels my darling. <laughs> See who that is, Bob. Yeah. This gentleman would like a minute with Mr. Lawrence. Just a moment. Dr. Igor Markov is waiting to see you. Igor Markov? I don't know the man. I'll tell him to write me for an appointment. Oh, wait a minute, Bob. I've got a few minutes. Let him come in. Am I gutting gowns yet? So I have the pleasure of addressing Mr. Anthony Lawrence. That's right, Doctor. What's on your mind? I should like to apologize to this charming young lady for my seeming rudeness. Well, I don't know what you're talking about, but go ahead. This is my daughter, Patricia, Dr. Markov. Please forgive me, young lady, for staring so rudely at you, but I really could not help it. Seeing you tonight was quite a shock because... Well, because you are the living image of my wife, Lenore, as she looked at the time we were married, she was taken away from me under very tragic circumstances. I understand. I accept your apology. Thank you. This will always remain an unforgettable moment in my life. Thank you. Auf Wiedersehen. So nice to have met you. I always appreciate the privilege of meeting a great artist. Thank you, Doctor. And good night. Good night, sir. Funny people, these foreigners. Do you suppose Pat really resembles his dear departed, or...? Or is right. That cock and bull story was old in Caesar's day. 
the nerve of the guy. My dear boy, you've got to get used to other men admiring Pat. She's a very beautiful girl. There's a difference between admiring and ogling. By the way he stared at me, he gave me the jitters. You'll find him in the next box, fishy stare and all. Oh, no, I won't. We're going to hear the rest of this concert from backstage. Then I'll have to get your wrap. You left it in the box. Oh, please do. I'll wait for you here. Well, Judd, five minutes. We've got to get ready. that the great Dr. Markov failed to make a favorable impression. Temporarily, yes. But there will be many opportunities in the future. Besides, the tall man was not averse to accepting a little gratuity and gave me all the information I needed. Ego, I've risked my life for you. I've kept your secret all these years. Does all this mean nothing to you? Don't I mean anything to you? Because of your knowledge of my work, I need you as an assistant. You have never met anything more, and you never shall. Keep that in mind. Some flowers for Miss Lawrence. Thank Dr. Markov, stop pestering me. First it was flowers three times a day, and now he's sending notes with them. So look, I can't stand any more of this. You've, you've just got to make him let me alone. Well, the man must be out of his mind. I never heard of such presumption. Now, don't you get upset about it, Pat. I'll take care of Dr. Markov. You just forget about him and let me handle this. What are you going to do, Dad? I'm going to call on our friend and tell him very plainly that his attentions to you are unwelcome, and then stop them immediately. You be careful, won't you? <laughs> Careful, what do you mean? Well, you'll probably laugh at me, but when you call on Dr. Markov, will you take Bob with you? Pat, I can take care of myself. But you said yourself he was out of his mind. Did you notice his eyes that night in your dressing room? They, they seem to stare right through me. <laughs> You've been listening to too many horror radio programs lately. What you need is a good workout on the bad mitten court. Come on, run along. <laughs> Fear not, fair lady. I shall bear the reptile in his den. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Anthony Lawrence is here to see you, Doctor. I will see him in a few moments. Oh, and uh, Maxine, you had better relieve me. I'm making a new batch of X-54, and it requires constant watching. I'll be right in, Doctor. Uh, the doctor will see you in a few minutes, sir. Won't you be seated? Thank you.
we should get rid of that brute. He's always hated me, and I'm, I'm deathly afraid of him. Oh, don't be a fool. He's perfectly safe in that cage. How could he harm you? It is silly. Besides, he's very essential to my work. Now, when uh, that uh, concentrated pituitary boils dry, turn off all of the burners. Add some elixir, place it in four cc ampules, and refrigerate them. Yes, Doctor. Watch it closely. See that it continues to boil, but very slowly. Now I must go and talk to Mr. Lawrence. I cannot leave him waiting any longer. Again. This isn't a professional call, Dr. Markov. I've come here on a purely personal matter. Oh. Well, in that case, you'd better come into my private office. Thank you. Uh, won't you sit down? I'll remain standing, if you don't mind. Oh, as you wish. I'll get to the point very quickly, Dr. Markov. I've come here in regard to my daughter, Patricia. Ah, yes, a lovely young woman. And that's beside the point. She doesn't welcome your attentions. I'm forced to ask you to stop annoying her. I'm afraid you are being very insulting. Your persistence has left me no other choice. I've already explained my deep interest in your daughter. Perhaps you thought I was lying. Did you look at this picture? What if there is a resemblance? That doesn't give you the privilege of annoying her. But I am going to marry her. Ma. <laughs> I'm amazed at your conceit. I'm warning you, Dr. Markov. Unless you stop annoying my daughter, I shall call the police. Stop not so fast. Let go of me. Pardon me, Miss Lawrence. Dr. Markov is on the telephone for you. Dr. Markov? Oh, say I'm not in. Yes, but he says it's important. He must talk to you concerning your father. My father? I'll talk to him. Hello? 
Yes, Miss Lawrence speaking. Oh, uh, Miss Lawrence, your father has had a slight attack of vertigo. Yes, he is uh, here in my office. It was probably brought on by overwrought nerves. I was wondering if uh, you had not better come and get him. Is he well? No, 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 not seriously. However, scarcely able to drive his own car. Of course, I could keep him here, or if you wish, I could call an ambulance. Ambulance? Oh, no, I'll be right there. Where is it? 1335 Cliff Drive. Thank you. Doctor? Uh, Maxine, turn down all the flames to about half. Well, Dr. Markov, the concentrator is nowhere near dry yet. I know, but it must boil very slowly. All right. So you see, Mr. Lawrence, nobody having witnessed our encounter. I am perfectly willing to keep it a secret. Of course, if you desire to say something about it, I will admit that you threatened me with violence, and I was forced to protect myself. It is simply a case of your word against mine. Is this Dr. Markov's residence? Yes. Are you Miss Lawrence? Yes. Come in. The doctor's expecting you. Father! How do you feel? Pat, what are you doing here? And Dr. Markov said you were a little indisposed, so I came to drive you home. Are you feeling better now? Yes, yes, much better. Are you well enough to start? Yes, of course. Steve, help Mr. Lawrence to his car. Now, uh, Miss Lawrence, may I have a word with you? Yes. I uh, think that your father will bear watching. If you notice him developing certain symptoms of... Well, if you notice him acting strangely, I would strongly advise you persuade him to see his doctor. I'll remember. Thank you. You're welcome. Have you finished? Yes, I did exactly as you told me. Uh, why are you working on the Formula X-54? I thought you were satisfied with X-53. Not quite. I have succeeded with X-53 in arresting the disease acromegaly. But it will do no more than hold it in check. Come, I will show you. You will recall after I injected him with the disease, it was allowed to proceed to this stage. Enlargement of the head, the feet, and so forth. But from the moment I gave him an injection of X53, there has been no change in the condition. Neither progressive, nor retrogressive. I have every reason to hope that this new formula will prove to be a complete cure for the disease. Think what it will mean to have the power to control a dread disease like acromegaly. The only living man to have such power. And why are you the only living man to have such power? You know why. Yes, I do. And you're not even a doctor. You stole the name and laboratory notes from the man you killed. He deserved to die. And his death made it possible for me to escape from Europe as the real Dr. Markov. 
And to reap the rewards earned by another man with years of work and study. What I took from him was small repayment for what he tried to take from me. The love of Lenore, my wife, the woman I worshipped. But his love cooled as I knew it would when he looked at her beautiful face and saw the ravages of the hideous disease acromegaly. Did you deliberately inoculate her with that dread disease? I did! I was determined that no other man should try to take her from me. I knew if she were no longer beautiful, no one else would want her, then I would have her all for myself. I... But she could not stand the sight of her own face. So she killed herself. This is incredible. Only a madman could do a thing like that. I'm getting out of here. I'm going to break the most down. I'm going to tell him. I'm going to tell him. I'm a madman. Stop. You are going no place. You are going no place. Go to your room. Stay there. no fun being away from you. I do wish you didn't have to spend so much time out of town. If I didn't, your father would probably get himself a new business manager. You know, it's chiefly on his business I'm away so much. I know. Bob, do you think you could book father for a series of summer concerts? Pat, what are you talking about? If you knew the heavy schedule I booked him for next season, you'd want him to have a good rest. Oh, I do, but he can't seem to rest. I don't know what's gotten into him. He seems to have so much energy. He just can't seem to work at all. Well, let's hope it keeps up. But it can't, Bob. Do you realize that he's up at six every morning? That he walks practically all day long? That, that I can't get him to go to bed at night? Why, sometimes I awaken at two or three in the morning. And he's still playing his piano. That's not normal in the past. Come here. You too, Bob. Doesn't it, doesn't it look as if my fingers were thicker? Well, your hands are swollen. Well, the fingers are anyway. Well, they feel awkward. When did you notice this? The past few days, I felt something coming on. My feet, too, seem enlarged. All my shoes feel tight. Do you suppose you've eaten something that poisoned you? Oh, no, no. I'd, I'd know it if I had. He said if you felt bad, I should persuade you to see a doctor. Who said? Dr. Markov. Markov? Yes. When was that? That day you went to see him about... about a social matter. Oh, rubbish. Why should I see a doctor when I never felt better in my life? Because I want you to, Father. Promise me you'll see Dr. Adams at once. Let me call him now. Nonsense. There's nothing the matter with me, really. I'll tell you what I'll do. If this condition doesn't clear up by tomorrow, I'll drop in to see Dr. Adams just to put your mind at ease. But you won't go. you put it off. Why don't you let me call him now? Because it isn't urgent. Anyway, right now, I feel like going out for a walk. But you've been walking all day. I can't help it. I feel restless and full of energy. What do you make of it, Bob? Oh, perhaps some minor upset. But I would have him checked over by Dr. Adams. And how are you feeling today, Mr. Lawrence? Physically, extremely well. And your appetite? Still increasing. Mr. Lawrence, after studying all the results of your laboratory tests, x-rays, metabolism records, I have reached a conclusion. But not being satisfied with my own alone, I called into consultation Dr. Kruger 
and Dr. Naylor, whose reputation, of course, you know. Yes, certainly. And they, without any hint from me, both came to the same conclusion. Acromegaly. Acromegaly? Yes. It's a very rare disease, glandular in origin, activated by a defective pituitary. Doctor, can't you tell me in plain English what's wrong with me and how serious it is? I'm trying to tell you. You have a glandular disorder, a disorder of the pituitary gland. A disease so rare that medical science knows little about it as yet. Is it fatal? Fatal? Well, not necessarily. It's a progressive disease, enlarges the extremities. It's accompanied by an increasing amount of energy to a fabulous and dangerous degree. Is it curable? Mr. Lawrence, there is but one man, to my knowledge, who knows anything important about acromegaly. He's a specialist in glandular disorders, and I understand has devoted a great deal of research to this particular disease. I urgently suggest that you consult this man, who is in a position to do more for you than any person in the profession. Who is it? Dr. Igor Markov. Dr. Markov? Yes, do you know him? Yes. Strange you didn't think to consult him. And I've just met him socially. I don't know him socially, but his name ranks among the top names in the profession. His reputation is international. So he is, therefore, the man that you should see, Mr. Lawrence. I'd rather not see Dr. Markov. Isn't there anybody else I can consult? No. He's the only man I know that can help you. He has not seen fit as yet to give out his findings or his method of treatment to the profession. So, therefore, if you're to be helped, you must go to him. And there's nothing you can do for me, Dr. Adams? Frankly, Lawrence, nothing effective. Well, thank you for your... your frankness. You will see him? I'll think it over. Hello, Stack. Is Miss Lawrence in? Oh, how do you do, Mr. Blake? I tell Miss Lawrence you're here. Bob, darling, I'm so glad you're back. I've only been away four weeks. How are you, sweetheart? I'm so worried. About what? About Father. What's he been up to now? Well, that's just it, Bob. I don't know. He's locked himself in his room for weeks. He hasn't allowed anybody in to see him. Stack takes his meals into him, but he has to leave the tray in the music room. He says the door into the bedroom is locked and that Father won't come out until after he's left. Is he in there now? Yes, but the door from the music room into his suite is locked from the inside. He sounds in excellent form. He hasn't touched the piano in weeks. William, bring my car around to the side entrance immediately and leave it there. I'll drive it myself. No. Darling. Easy, darling. You fainted. Bob, did you see what I saw? What are you talking about? Did you see his face? His head? It was so large. It's your imagination, darling. The lights in there were strange, that's all. No, Bob, no. Hmm. 
Maxine, see who's in my waiting room. Maxine! Maxine, are you there? Maxine! 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 Yes, Marka. Weren't you expecting me? You knew I'd have to come to you sooner or later. To you, the one man with experience concerning the hideous disease of acromegaly. Oh, you had it cunningly worked out, Marka. So that I would be forced to come to you, to you alone. Then you would be in a position to dictate your own terms in exchange for that help. Terms which no doubt would involve my daughter, Patricia. Oh, you were clever, Markov. Exceedingly clever. sufficient knowledge of the disease, not only to alleviate it, but to infect a person with it. You hold a decided advantage. So you see, Markov, I know you infected me with something that caused acromegaly. But how you made the disease develop so rapidly when science has proven that it takes years to reach this stage, I do not know. But you did. And now, Markov, I come to you, as you knew I must, to make terms. Yeah. I've come to make terms. No, no, Lawrence, you, you overestimate my control of the disease. I've made an extensive study of it. Yes, that is true. But after all, I am only an apprentice. Yes, the devil's apprentice. Markov, you have set yourself up as a Frankenstein and created a monster. I am that monster. But if you remember, the monster destroyed the man who created him. That is what I'm going to do to you. Destroy you! Good work, Steve. Put him on that chair while I prepare an anesthetic. Will be down this evening. But I must put my mind at rest. And can't you take my word for it, Pat? I'm sorry, Bob. In this case, I can't. It's locked. You see, he doesn't want to be disturbed. But I must see him. Oh, not tonight, Pat, please. In the morning, perhaps. I'll tell you what. I've got to see him in the morning on some business. And as soon as I've finished, I'll send for you. How's that? Well, make it early. I can't have this hanging over my head. I know, dear. And I'll make it just as early as I can. Now, how about getting some rest for yourself? You look exhausted. Oh, I suppose I do, but I can't help it. You look lovely to me, dear. But you do need rest. Now run along. Sleep well. I'll try. Good night. Good night. Oh, Stack. Stack, have you got a key to the music room? Why, no, sir. Why? Well, it's locked, and I wanted to see Mr. Lawrence. I'm sorry, sir, but he's gone out. Out? Oh, yes, sir. About a half an hour ago, he had his car brought around and then dismissed William. Where did he go, do you know? Not the slightest idea, sir. I didn't see him, but William said he was all muffled up. Oh. Stack, I wish you'd ring me at home when he comes in. Very good, sir. And shall I wait up for him, sir? Well, no. If he comes in soon, you might ring me. Otherwise, go to bed. I'll see him in the morning. Very good, sir. Good night, Stack. Good, good night, night, Mr. Blake. Uh, put him in the room of the surgery in the east wing. How could 
could you be so inhuman as to infect him with that disease and order bargain for his daughter? Who gave you that idea? You left the dictograph open. I heard every word that was said. Forget what you heard. It does not concern you. I'll not forget. If you don't give up that insane idea of marrying Patricia Lawrence, I'll, I'll tell the truth about you. You would not dare. Oh, yes, I would. Does this mean that I have completely lost your loyalty? <laughs> you speak of loyalty. You don't even know the meaning of the word. You seem to forget all the things I've done for you. I've even risked my life for you, hoping that you might realize how much I love you, that someday you might return that love. But no, all I meant for you was just someone to help you attain your own selfish aims. I'm tired of it. I can't stand it any longer, do you hear me? I can't stand it. I'll never let you marry that girl. Never, 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 never! Maxine. You heard nothing. You heard nothing. You heard nothing. Now go to your work. back in the other room.
Good morning, Doctor. The bird of cage was left unlocked last night. No, really? Why, he could have killed somebody. Yes, he could have killed me if Ace hadn't heard me scream and driven him back again to the cage. Oh, well, you are very fortunate. Very. And so am I. I could have lost a valuable assistant. How do you suppose the cage was left unlocked? Oh, I suppose the attendant was careless. I shall discharge him immediately. Look, Doctor. It's normal. You've discovered a cure. Oh, Maxine, it is marvelous. Maxine, this is, this is great. Do you know what it means? It means that I can ask my own price. I can... Oh, uh, by the way, Maxine, uh, I have a special prescription I want filled at Handcuff and Groves. Uh, you will go and see to it yourself personally. Couldn't it be ordered over the phone? If I wanted it that way, I would have said so. Very well. Good morning, Mr. Ack. Good morning, Miss Lawton. Have you taken my father's breakfast into him yet? No, I haven't. You haven't? Why not? Well, as a matter of fact, your father isn't in. Isn't in? Where did he go? I don't know. He didn't say. When did he go? I can't exactly say. Sometime last night. Last night? Yes, miss. You mean he's been away all night and left no word? Absolutely none. I'll get it. Hello? Yes, Miss Lawrence speaking. Uh, this is Dr. Markov. Now, please don't be alarmed, but your father came to me last night for a consultation. Father came to you last night for a consultation? Yes. I found it advisable to keep him here for observation. How, how is he? Well, he's quite comfortable now. He is quite comfortable, Miss Lawrence, I assure you. I'll be right over and pick him up and bring him home. I would uh, strongly advise against taking him home, Miss Lawrence. But why? I can't leave him there. Do you think I should take him to a hospital? I suggest you leave him right where he is, Miss Lawrence. You see, I have all the facilities here to take care of him in my sanatorium. Oh, I, I didn't know you had a sanatorium, too. I'll be right there. When Mr. Blake arrives, tell him I've gone to Dr. Markov's. 1335 Cliff Drive. Dr. Markov's, 1335 Cliff Drive. <laughs> yes. Very well, Miss. Lawrence, I want you to try hard to understand what I'm saying. Uh, try hard. Uh -huh. This is Dr. Markov. I can save you, Lawrence. I can cure you. Do you hear me? Yes, uh, I can hear you. Good. Remember that I am the only one that can cure you, and I will cure you on one condition. Uh -huh. A very simple condition, Lawrence. Uh -huh. Your daughter is on her way over here now. Uh -huh. I want you to persuade her to be very agreeable to me. No. You can convince her that it is you she is coming to see. You can tell her that I am helping you. No. That is a very little thing to ask for your cure. No, no, no! Very well. We shall see about that. Dr. 
Dr. Markov, please. Come in. Dr. Markov wants you to wait in there. How long ago did she leave for Dr. Markov's stack? About a half an hour ago, I should say, sir. I'll have to step on it. 1335 Trip Drive, you That's said. correct, sir. I do not have to cure you, Lawrence, because nobody knows I have discovered a cure. Oh. Oh. Miss Lawrence is here. Miss Lawrence. Oh, it is a great pleasure seeing you again. Dr. Markov, how is my father? He's resting comfortably. Please be frank with me. What's the matter with him? It is a glandular ailment. How serious is it? Well, Miss Lawrence, I'm afraid it is quite serious, particularly in your father's case. Why particularly so in his case, Dr. Markov? Well, you see, uh, the peculiar disease your father is suffering from causes extreme enlargement of the extremities, the hands, feet, and certain portions of the head. In a professional pianist, it is fatal. That is to the continuance of his career, I mean. Not only are his fingers incapacitated for the intricacies of delicate performance, but his very appearance, upon which so much depends for public approval, is most uninviting. Dr. Markov, how does it happen my father came to you? I think you will find that your Dr. Adams sent him to me. Dr. Adams? Yes. Dr. Adams made exhaustive tests and in consultation with several eminent colleagues of his, diagnosed your father's case, and correctly so, as acromegaly. Acromegaly? I never heard of it. If you have, it is very rare. And since glandular disturbances are my special field and acromegaly my particular interest, your father was advised to consult me. With, with what result? I am anxious to cure your father, Miss Lawrence. Most anxious. Providing he is willing to obey my instructions through the letter. Do you anticipate any lack of cooperation on his part, Dr. Marco? Perhaps some. You see, Miss Lawrence, it is rather long and slow treatment. Naturally, a man of your father's nervous temperament will be impatient, obstinate, even rebellious on occasion. Progressively so, as uh, the brain begins to function more normally. You see, Miss Lawrence, your father is mentally incompetent. You... you mean he... Oh, well, shall we say, uh, temporarily unbalanced mentally. The functioning of the pituitary, uh, being aggravated by pressure, makes the patient physically violent on occasion, and great care must be taken that he does not do violence to himself or to others. Dr. Markov, I'm my father. I can easily understand your need to do so, Miss Lawrence. And I would gladly save you the pain if I could. But I know you will not be satisfied unless you do see him for yourself. Besides, it will give you a basis for comparison. It will give you new hope from day to day as you see him improve. Where is he? Take me to him. In a moment. But remember, although he is still under a sedative, he might easily be aroused to violence. I would advise not to excite him, merely to reassure him that he will receive the very best of care, that you will see to it yourself personally, and that you recommend he do everything possible to cooperate with us. I will, I will. Take me to him. This way, Miss Lawrence. <laughs> Mr. 
you know what to do. And uh, remember, Miss Lawrence, advise your father. Full his cooperation in every way possible. Father, I'm here. Pat. You're going to be all right. Dr. Markov said so. Markov? Yes. He's going to cure you, he and I. Markov! Markov! No! No! Markov! Markov! No! No! Dr. Markov, why is he strapped down? To prevent his doing violence to himself or to others, Miss Lawrence. Take them off. Take them off, do you hear? Well, that would be very dangerous. <sighs> Take them off, I say. Take them off at once. Stop that. Calm yourself. Calm yourself, Miss Lawrence. I don't care what you say. You can't treat him like a wild animal. It's a necessary precaution, Miss Lawrence. If he were to become violent, he would be extremely dangerous. I don't care what you say. You can't treat him like a wild animal. His recovery depends solely on you. What do you mean? I will cure your father when you decide to become my wife. Let go of me. I'll never marry you. Never is a long time. Except some people do change their minds. Just fainted. Dr. Markov was the only man who could cure Dad. With him dead, there's not much hope left. Oh, yes, there is, Miss Lawrence. I'm familiar with the serum Dr. Markov has perfected for the cure. He has been using it to bargain with your father for you. He'll be all right. It might take a little while, but he'll be all right. Thank you. 